Welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan. And I'm Lisa Jackson. So glad you can join us tonight. And we're really excited to have with us guest Amy Groves, who's going to talk about why we should think about changing the name of Board of Selectmen to Select Board. So that's a yes. great thing to do. It How is. long have you been thinking about that? I thought about it last year, um, a little bit before town meeting. Mm -hmm. And then I thought to myself, you know, I had time that I could have probably presented it at a town meeting, but then oh. I thought, you know what? There wouldn't be time to really kind of talk mm, to people mm -hmm. in the town yeah. and, and bring to it before really, boards and yeah, get their and to really feedback. share it and to talk about it and to kind of maybe change some hearts and minds and just give people a chance to think about it. So I thought I'd wait a year. That was smart, um, yeah, because yeah. the first people don't understand why, yep. you know, and it was interesting talking to my daughter about the subject we were talking about. She's like, oh, mom, that's interesting, you know, like it makes sense, you know, you're going to call them select persons or, you <laughs> know, which I thought was, fun, you know, funny. I said, no, it's pretty benign. It's just select board, yeah. which, you know, planning it's board. It's yeah, neutral. Yeah, right. It's planning board, you know, board of health. You true, know, that's true. You, you know what I mean? When you think of other boards, it really, you know, it, it describes what their function is and, yeah. you know, and, and not, not necessarily what sex they are or yeah. just a older traditional name. Yeah, right. like firefighter, it's what they do. Right. It's not right. which a sex they are. Yeah, like police, police officer. Police officer, yeah. yeah. And nurse, it can be male or female. Right. It's just nurse, doctor, right. same Teacher. thing. It's, yeah. a, it's a neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, when I ran for board selectman, couple years ago I felt very awkward being a selectman because I'm not a select man mm -hmm. and you know so a select person I really didn't didn't know how I felt about it and then I would be called you know a selectman or running for selectman so mm -hmm. I actually didn't put running for selectman I think I put here to help Hopkinton um, mm -hmm you know, for the board of selectmen, because yeah. I, I was okay, I felt okay running for the board. I didn't yeah. feel okay running to be a select Say, man. Labeling yourself yeah. as yeah. a selectman. Do you know the history behind it? So why was it originally called selectmen and, yeah. you know? Well, it, it is of historical interest. You know, yeah. uh, people are always saying, oh, I'm a traditionalist, I care about right. history. Well, I actually do a lot. Yeah, I care course, about it. So, too. you know, when Hopkinton was incorporated in the 1700s, women couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. And they, they gathered together and they got, you know, as in most New England towns, they said, well, we can't do it all. We've got to do our farming. We've got to do our shopkeeping. Sure. We can't yeah. do everything. So we will select a few men oh, to take okay. care of these matters for us. And those those simple were simple as that. Of course yeah. there were men because women couldn't vote. Women couldn't right. serve on such a board. So yeah. it made perfect sense. You can't blame them, right? right? It does make sense. But since 1920, it hasn't made quite as much sense. <laughs> right, true. Right. And, you know, right. and women have been on the board since around 1974. It was right. Yeah, I thought um, that was interesting. Yeah. That was that recent. Yeah. You know what I mean? That when I was looking back in the history of Hopkinton, I yeah. was curious. It took a while. <laughs> it did. It well, did. The, the women's lib movement was in the 60s. It was. So it yeah. may have taken that long for women to be accepted as being in that role right yeah. even though they and had the right to vote creeps. i mean like it yeah. it takes it's like baby steps it awareness yeah. yeah but it seems like such a short period of time and even looking back you know about you know growing up just thinking well women you know women are equals and all of that and yeah. you know it was interesting looking back on history because i was just curious i was poking around and i was just like that's so strange to me you know because what i've taught my daughter and you've taught your daughter and you've taught your children you know like hey this is this is what it is, but it's really, you know, kind of a, doesn't, in the length of our history as human beings and government yeah. and churches and, Well, yeah. we haven't had a woman president, you right. know, I mean, there, there, there are still, right. there are still yeah. some places where women, it, it's uncharted territory. Well, and it's women. interesting, too, we're 51% of the population. So mm -hmm. that's another factor as well, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, it, and we live longer. We yeah. happen to live longer. So I think it's kind of interesting, you know, I mean, there, I, and I love, you know, looking back on stuff like that in the yeah. history and it's, it, it was curious to me. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, the dates 1974 and 1920 to me are significant dates, just right. as the 1700s were significant. Exactly. It's, it's all good. You know, it's right. all part of our history. And it's so. our growth. It's yeah, our growth yeah. as, you know, as humans and, and, you know, really, and I don't even think it's so much about women are great and all this, but I think it's really 
just representing the population. I mean, yeah. isn't that what government's supposed to do in, in giving the population a voice and giving a perspective from a certain mm -hmm. perspective you have in life? Yeah. You know, so I think, you know, that makes sense. But Yeah. It's so, all about, like, small incremental change. Right. You know, just to kind of keep up. Because we already say, for instance, we say chair of the board of selectmen. Right. How does that make any sense? You know, right. too say, long. We don't for say one chairman; thing. we say chair. Right. right. We all we all say that, right. just like right. as we and say. And all the boards yeah. and committees, yeah. I, I yeah. serve on the same thing. You know, it's so just it's an adjustment. You right. Know? It's to just to get things in alignment with where we already are. I thought it was so interesting how many towns have adopted this. Yeah. And it was, you know, and I. Is it a with third of? A it's third about a third. Yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. What I found out was there, there was it is about a third. But then I saw all these other towns, about another third right. of people who seem to be using it, sort of different terms interchangeably. interchangeably. Mm, right. And I started looking into it, and what I discovered was with Hopkinton, we've got to go through a whole series of steps just to make a small. You know, right. cosmetic mm. change like this—it's a lot of different kinds of documents, yeah. and well, it takes and think a long of all time. Of our bylaws and all of that—you yeah. really have to edit. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of—I mean, for someone that That's edits documents yeah. all the time, you know, it's just it's you know, thank God for replace. Yes, yeah, <laughs> on, <replace. laughs> yeah, on yeah. word, but you know what I mean. But but, but that's why I think that so many towns are in the middle of yes. changing it, and they're sort of in flux. So about another third of the towns seem to be using it inconsistently. Because I think a lot of them haven't finished the change yet; they're en right. route to changing it. Right. So, so that sounds like a third has already done it. One yeah. third's in the middle. Yeah. Something or like considering that. it. Yeah. Of you know the feasibility and the, how much work is involved. Yeah. And then is there a third that's pretty firmly? There's still a third that just, uh, there's no evidence yet that they've considered it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes people just do yeah. what has been done. Yeah. As yeah. a, you know, because they just haven't questioned it. Well, and I think it's yeah. like someone like yourself that brings it forward and then yeah. people say, hey, this is yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Um, so I, I forget, and I, I, I know I bumped across the first community or municipality in Massachusetts that did it, it was in the 70s, correct? The first know. community, I was surprised. I think it was like '78 or something like that, and it was in Western Mass. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty progressive. It probably was. Yeah, so yeah. but I thought that was interesting because I was like, when did this start? What? Probably what near start? Amherst to one of those yeah. college areas. Yeah. No, I I, I want to uh, Ashburnham. I want to, but yeah. I don't remember it, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, I, I forgot yeah. when I looked it up. I was like, oh, that's interesting, because I was I thought maybe it'd be a new trend or or something that just started, but no, it's been going on for a long time. Yeah, it's followed more or less, if you look at the map, it's followed kind of a, an eastern migration. Mm -hmm. And now it's around, you know, Winchester did it last yeah. year, and we're starting to see, of course, Brookline did it fairly early on. They did. Cambridge, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, but um, but generally it's kind of moving its way. So it's it's so right around our area council. now, yeah. <laughs> where it's starting to take hold. Oh, so that's something I didn't look it, up, council. too. Councilman. Councilman. So what about, because there's many yeah. cities, I yeah. mean, there's Council a, you know, or, yeah, no, huh. it's, count, yeah. yeah, city council, they usually say, but it would be a council month. I would think over time, eventually, it, it will all right. be gender neutral, because yeah. that, that makes sense, we're all human well, beings. Well, it really so. labels what yeah. the task is, or what your yeah, authority exactly. is, or whatever you are overseeing. Right, the role. Yeah, yeah so it's, So you have a website. Correct. I do. And yeah. um, and on there, because I went on to the website and you mm -hmm. asked people to, to sign a petition. Yeah. yeah. And you explain it a little bit. Yeah. I thought it was very clear. It was very good. And in yeah. there, it talks about the third of the towns. Yeah. Um, can you just reiterate some of what is you put in there? Yeah. I mean, I kind of wanted to have a landing place where somebody could go and get the update, up to date information mm -hmm. and understand it. Ask a few questions, get a few answers mm -hmm. right off the top. And um, there is an associated, you know, Facebook event page and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. there's also, you know, people can just endorse it. You know, it's, it's a sort of like yeah. a petition, but yeah. it really isn't a binding petition. It's just right. to no. say, I support this, right. you know. And, you know, I put it out there, and it got shared on Facebook and picked up by Metro West Daily News. Yeah. And um, within the first 24 hours, we had 100 signatures. Yeah. So, it, I mean, people really, really, you know, got on there and, and endorsed. Um, and it's a so. great compilation of all that information because mm -hmm. as I was poking around searching, it was kind of hard to find it. Yeah. Like the search engines didn't, I mean, I'm sure yeah. you went through all that when you were trying to yeah. dig up some history, but it was, and I'm pretty savvy at finding stuff, and it was a little difficult to yeah. kind of stumble across 
because everything would pop up like, oh, you know, Ashland Board of Selectmen, or, yeah. you know what I mean, instead of, it would automatically revert you to Selectmen instead of, you know, yeah. Select Board, because like I said, what communities have Select Boards? Yeah, HopkintonSelectBoard.org would get you there, but um, it's kind of tricky because... And Hopkin- that's the name of the yeah, uh, HopkintonSelectBoard.org. The- yeah. yeah, thank you. But, um, but um, Hopkinton... New Hampshire, I think. Yes. Is. Yes. They've and already, Rhode Island. They've has already Hopkinton. changed. They so. did. Yeah. So that's where <laughs> so I was bouncing that back and forth. Bothers me. I don't want to be behind. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta be first. I know it hurts my my ego, my pride. Well, how many? But what's the pride. population of their town? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's smaller. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. So you have a, a larger, yeah. raw, uh, boulder to push up the hill. Yeah. So you know what's interesting too, and I work across the country. There aren't a lot of um, states that use local government as we do right so that's yeah. another thing that and was so, interesting that it's kind of a new England board. thing yeah. yeah so like you know there's there's county governments in the rest yes. of the united states yes. you know what i mean so it's interesting so yes. when you think about it i mean i love the way massachusetts does things well, and our you county, yeah, county is so government. huge yeah middlesex, middlesex county, county you could never right it'd be unwieldy but i think you know like for someone that works in public health i see that by each community having their own governance it really is the best for that community sure. because it yeah. really, yeah. and you know this from being from Indiana, it's just kind of like a rubber stamp. Okay, this is what the county does. That's right. You know, and I felt very disconnected from government in yeah. Idaho. You know, even as a kid growing up, I did student government, but I was mm-hmm. like, hey, what about local government? How does yeah. this work? And that was a huge disconnect. So we're very lucky in New England that we have yeah. these this, this local leadership and and mm-hmm. most are volunteers yeah you know yeah. which is which is amazing to me is like that's really the foundation of and, government and you that's know? the grassroots piece you yeah. know i think having having that broad base of actual residents yeah all yeah. bringing to bear whatever their history and background and and mm-hmm. views and leanings it makes more sense than having a paid employee Absolutely. because really the the people on the ground the grassroots are going to be the ones that are going to speak their truth and and express their preference and their belief right and the perspective always changes yeah you know what i mean because nobody can do this as a volunteer all the time you know what i mean unless you're retired or or whatever Mm -hmm. you know i think it's really good that there's that there is that turnover yeah you know and and i love the idea of the you know this like Board. Yeah. I Can I say also, mm-hmm. I am pretty sure that I heard Claire Wright say select board <laughs> in one of her. <laughs> I Did have, you? Oh, I, and she was I, against it. Well, yeah, the thing, I she, think yeah. I heard her talk about it that way. Yeah. And, and then I think in theory she doesn't like it, but I'm pretty sure it came out. Right. In one of hers, is this where I say, Lordy, I hope there are tapes. You know, yeah, exactly. right, right. I have to go look, those, look that up. There are tapes. <laughs> right. So, the, so the, my point is, it's a natural thing, right? Yeah, when you're a woman, really to say select board, just yeah. be, even if that's not what you in your head you think. Oh, it really should be this because this is the history. Because she's yeah. very historically she is, grounded, yeah. but yes. but it just makes sense. It well, is short. To, how, I, I mean, mean, it's short. Again, it rolls how does tongue. a woman describe herself as right. a selectman? I well, just I have trouble with that. Right, and you know what I. When I read what Clara Wright had said, I thought, you know, as a chairperson, I, I chair a lot of committees, and I like things to move along. Yeah. Yes. So I gathered from her perspective, it wasn't just the tradition, but I also felt when you serve as a chairman, you kind of, you try to get through the frills and get stuff done. Yep, and I think to her, it felt like it was something extra or more mm-hmm. To work on. I mean, and not, dif- you know. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, I know for someone that's a chairman, when stuff like that comes up, I, mm. I could see. So it's a minor just, issue. Yeah, as you're role- Taking time. Right, and, mm. and for, to defend her a little bit, you know what I mean? Because I know when stuff comes, and I, I run a, a hard line when I'm a chairperson of a, a board because I want stuff done. I'm very yeah. task-oriented. Yeah. And from the way she said it, it felt mm. like it was like that. And just for, I know how I am. I just, I'm like, let's just get this done. And and then, you know, the time that it yeah. takes to do that. So there and there might, are other more important yeah, issues. Yeah, and I mind. think I think that may be why some people are against it is because they feel like, okay, so now we have to change the wording <laughs> in our bylaws. We have to change our websites. Well, yes, we, we do. Have to, no, no, but I'm, I'm just it's, playing oh, I, the I other side of the coin know. because I think that's yeah. I think that's a lot of the hesitation. As I was reading the comments 
I was reading comments from other boards when this came before, yeah, yep. and I it felt that's the nuance I got. I wasn't it didn't feel sexist to me. I guess mm. is probably what I want to say about that. Is I didn't well, I, like why if it ain't broke don't fix it right, kind of thing. That and and just in the interest of time, you know, like it's something extra to be added. So, um, so John sent us an email. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Saying, wasn't there an all-female board of select men ah. in the early '90s, the first in the state? Mary Harrington. So we have yeah. had. There were three. Yeah. Right. It's back yeah. when there were three people. Yes. Yeah. There it was, was one. So hockey team Thank you, John. has made history in that way. Right. You know, we just didn't. We didn't call them. There were three female select men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how That's what I've heard. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> When yeah. you say it, it sounds really kind and of And actually, I, I know because I was chair of the youth commission for many years. I just called myself the chair, which is yeah. ridiculous because that's a piece of furniture. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But, uh, you know, but I never, ever called myself chairperson. Yeah. I didn't say chairwoman. Right. I didn't say chairman. I just said chair. Whenever yeah. I put anything down, I'm the chair of. Chair. Well, yeah. it gets to what you were saying. People like short. Yeah. yeah, and for that matter, select board is shorter than board of select men. Absolutely. True. So, but you know, you can't legislate, and to get to what Claire was saying, you can't legislate what people say. Right. And that's fine. Right. You know, and maybe we shouldn't. You know, um, if you're in a meeting and you and you slip and you say something yeah. that's a little bit archaic, I don't think that's going to be a problem. No, right. No, um, no, I agree. But it just it just talks about official communication and documentation. Right. So now I have a uh, frivolous question, perhaps. Oh, good. Yeah. Would you say? <laughs> Capital S select capital B board and squish it together, or would you say capital S select small B board and squish it together, or would you say capital S select and space I would cap capital both. B board? <laughs> yeah, but so, would you keep it separate? So now you're not I talking to the historian; you're yeah. talking to the, the grammarian. Yeah, exactly, the grammarian. Yeah, it's two words. Why would you make it one? Some of the towns have right. made it select one word. Selectman is two words. That's they right. They squished no, it's one it. Word. No, oh, oh, it's select they made it man. Into one man. Yeah. Right. Select men. They made a yeah, new right. word. It's, it's a compound word. So I didn't know if you would make select board. Yeah. I just didn't I know. Think I think it's two words. Some towns did make it one word, and I... I you what know, is my, your, what my is your feeling is, my feeling I think is it should be two baby it. steps. You know? okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I don't know why you'd make it one word. It, it doesn't make sense. Because, well, it's a board. Because it's, yeah. it's what but it does. it's the select board. I mean, planning board. Right. Oh, okay. Words. All right. See that the, 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 that I can. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to know why. Why? Well, you would... some communities call the health board. And it's all one word. No. See? Okay. <laughs> so good. So we'll do two words. So two we're, words. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that no, it's interesting. So I just and but I was as I started fishing into it, I was like I get my bristles up because I'm a, mm. a woman. And I'm like, well, what's this all about? And then then I started to think a little bit more about it and say, hey. You know, it might be just more, yeah, just problematic. They feel like with time, but yeah, I mean, I, I think. But that, nowadays, it's so much easier. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like easier to, to change documents. I do it, it all really the time because yeah. we change what we call things a lot in public health. <laughs> so um, I go back and I do well, a word it's search, not, and, and it's yeah. not a big deal. I mean, right. I think there have been many times when wording has been changed sure. to update it, right? Yeah. You know, or or make it. Yeah, more Align with more, yeah. what's being done. Um, I do have to say that I heard that Mary Harrington, one of the original three female selectmen, mm -hmm. believes it should stay the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. That's what I so saw. So it's a yeah. traditional, yeah, yeah, you know, traditional title um, that she felt very proud of. Right. You know, and and I can yeah. see that side too. So I can see both sides. Yeah. But I know in my role where mm -hmm. I was thinking of myself as a selectman. For yeah. me, that didn't feel right. like the right yeah. thing. Yeah. So that's my perspective. Yeah, and I do care about what people who are on the board think or of have course. thought in the past. Right. But having said that, I mean, I, I think it's interesting, but having said that, I think I'm not really motivated to change it for Mary. I'm motivated to change it for Mary's granddaughter. Exactly. She has one. Exactly. And so I think we need to be, in, instead of just looking at history, and although that's important and it's interesting, I think we need to be looking at legacy. Yeah. You know, I'm 58 years old. I'm starting to think about legacy. Right. And in 100 years, we're going to be history. Right. Sorry, but we are. 120. 120. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of us are going to do better than us. Right. And people are going to be looking at us. Yeah. Yes. And they're going to be saying, what were these people about? Right. You know? I love that. Yeah. And you're awesome. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's. And it's things, moving things forward in yeah. a, a proper or a equal direction or... 
well, more modern And direction. we will have a female president, mm -hmm. I think, within mm -hmm. the next five, ten years. That is going to happen. It came yeah. close. Yeah. And, and now people are understanding that it's, why not? Well, look at all the women getting involved in politics That's what right I'm saying. Now. I mean, it's really finally shifting yeah. for yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, really to represent the populace. I mean, that's what yeah. government's supposed to do. Right. So, but anything else you want to add or say no. about it? Or? I think just, you know, if people want to know more about it, just come to HopkintonSelectBoard.org. Find and that's all more. one word, right? <laughs> <laughs> one URL. Kidding. Yeah. No spaces. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay. So thank you so much thank for you. and thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. Thank for, you very much for for speaking up on a worthy cause, a worthy mm -hmm. issue. Worthy and um, how many signatures do you have now? Last I checked, it was up to 160. But yeah. I think by May we'll have. Oh, absolutely. Because <laughs> it's just, it's just, people yeah. are just becoming aware of this. Quick, what's the process to change it? Is oh, there a process? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, I'm okay. arcing a little bit. Okay. That is yeah. a good question. Um, so, the way that Hopkinton is set up, yeah. um, you know, our charter is devilishly difficult to change. We change it once every 10 years in yeah, charter review. We just yeah. did that. And it is a huge, long, drawn out, painful process. Oh, it is. Yeah. So, rather than get into it during the last charter review, which involved a lot of stuff, I think that what we're going to do now, since it wasn't changed then, what we'll do is at the next town meeting in May, mm -hmm. regular town meeting, um, there will be a couple of articles introduced to the warrant, a pair of articles, and one will be to change um, the general bylaws. That's just by simple majority. And, yeah. and right there, vote, and it's done. Yeah, or nay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then also to change the zoning bylaws. There are a few, a few references in the zoning bylaws to, oh, okay. to that. And um, that would need two-thirds majority. Okay. But yeah, you're Because neighbor. it's a zoning bylaw. Yeah. And really, yeah. it's just changing that term, that yeah, particular term. So you're not changing any laws or anything no. else, just yeah. the terminology for the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah and there so. might be a little equivalency thing saying, if you see this, it means that kind of thing. That sure. typical, typical legal language. Yeah. yeah. And then at that point, and that's up to the town, mm -hmm. you know. And then if that happens, then the bylaws get changed. I'm hoping that at that point, when people see how many people are behind it and mm -hmm. that we change the bylaws, that it would be something where we would want to make things like the website and letterhead stationery consistent with that. Right. Just to make it consistent. And, and I think at that point. But baby you know, steps, steps. Yeah, as baby you said. steps. Yeah. So just to... throw it out there, and I hope this isn't contentious, but mm -hmm. is it mostly women that are voting for this, or can you see that? Or is it, what do you, what is your feel on the male side of this? I've seen a whole bunch of men in there. Okay. Um, I think it's probably a majority of women, but you know what? There might be some selection bias there because I think a lot of this stuff has been socialized on Facebook. Right. And right. the Hopkinton women are all over Facebook. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I instant messaged a few of my friends. They instant messaged a few right. of theirs, and it's yes, there, yes. and that's kind of how it's that's yeah, right. I, yeah. I think you really can't get a read on that right. yet. Now I was curious. Because it's just yeah. beginning, and as you say, it's going out through the female channels initially yeah, yeah. Right. and then y y if there is an article by Jonathan Phelps or whomever yeah. in the paper then it becomes more broadly um, right. understood yeah. and then the men would be able to speak up but right. I think that I don't think it's well Far known enough out. not yeah. yet to really be able to gauge no, I was just curious male, because I think we both have a different feeling about it yeah you know what I mean like men and women would have a different maybe yeah, yeah. And I think ultimately there are probably a lot of people. There's not just a yes or no feeling. Exactly. There's a lot in the middle. A lot of people who are saying, yeah. you know, it's not my highest priority, but I wouldn't bother to fight it. You know, right, I mean, right. Kind of in the middle there. And that's fine. It's perfectly right. reasonable. I think, I think there are lots of things that are, you know, very important to me. Right. Um, aside from this, this isn't the most important thing in the whole world. But it's a simple change, and so why not make it? Right. Why not do it? And I think, you know? as you said, it's for a future. You right. know, yeah. given the evolution of females and politics or history or in society right. yeah. i think it's a natural flow oh, in I my agree. opinion and so at that point you know once we've got all that done then next time the charter review comes up it's just a it's slam dunk there. and nobody right. has have to, you don't even have to worry about when it. is the next charter review 10 it's years another said? another eight years or so eight. because oh so just, it was only two we just years had ago one. yeah, yeah we, we just did, did it special it town exhausting meeting. yeah okay pam yeah. wax lax etc so anything you can do to make charter review easier i'm sure and this will do that yeah that's great well, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you thank so you. much for yeah. all you're doing. Thank you. Great. And we'll be back to talk about renewable energy sources. Yes.
one, I think everybody got together and worked This out. week on it's All About Hopkinton, Jim Cousins sits down with Jean uh, Birchman and Kathleen Dinsmore to talk about pieces. the Marathon Quilters um, Guild. So people worked on, it was all pieced on a foundation that was on a shape, so you sort of overshoot it and trim it down. Mm -hmm. um, so people worked on that all together and making these exterior blocks as well. Yeah. And then once all those pieces were done, then one person put it all together. This week on the Concerts and Commons series, Amanda Maffei and her mercenaries. This week on Highlights from the Hill, Jim Cousins, Carol Cavanaugh, and their guests talk about all the prep work needed to start off the school year. Um, kind of over um, saw all that in the project. So everyone else had to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Let the team come in and trust them and everything pretty much got it where it was supposed to go by the organization of the numbers. Yeah. So everyone had a sticker and a number. Why don't you put it on the box that got there. Welcome back. We are now going to talk about renewable energy sources. Yep. And um, thinking about this last week, yeah. uh, decided that we would focus on it a little bit more intensely. Yep. Um, and also, we want to invite you to call in and give us your feedback yeah. and ideas. I mean, it was interesting as I was researching, and I'm sure Margie was researching a lot, she found ideas that she had not even heard of before. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you have any great ideas on how to... Um, have more renewable energy and, and well, why if you it's work a positive for a solar thing. Company. And if you have any negatives on it, if you think there's yeah. negatives that go along with it, please call in or um, message us on Facebook. Or if you work for a solar company and you yeah. know a little more than we know, which is not a lot. And I have to say, <laughs> for someone, and I've tried to get solar for years, and mm -hmm. I have too many trees. That's happened to me too. Yeah, and that's and that's frustrating to me. And I've looked at geothermal. I've looked at yep. a lot of different things, and you know, I just really haven't been able to find a an effective way for myself. You have to knock trees down. Yeah. But the other piece of that, because I had someone actually come to the house. I had talked to people, but I had me them too. come. Yeah. And some of the things that concerned me were little things like they have to, wet, you know, drill into your roof, and they yep. couldn't guarantee that damage to the shingles and the right. roof and everything else. I think that's but getting I think better it, uh, now because I just had someone come a few months ago I would and look so. at it. And because um, I'm like, is there any way? I mean, like, there's got to be a way, you know, I'm like, I, can I trim these trees? And I think in New England, it's a very difficult thing because out west, and I yeah. know, like, tons of people have. Well, because there are no trees. You know, and they have wind and hydro. And, you know, it's interesting yeah. when you think about it because of where we live in New England. I think this a lot of this presents a little bit of a challenge. You yeah, know what so I mean? I have but a, yeah, um, yeah, this is from United States Consumption of Energy by Energy Source 2017. So the little tiny green wedge here yeah. is renewable energy. And then this is petroleum 37%, natural gas 29%, coal 14%, nuclear electric power 9%. But the renewable energy piece is 11%. And within yeah. that is geothermal, solar, wind, biomass waste, mm -hmm. um, biofuels, wood, and hydroelectric. So there are there are seven things that could be an alternative to right. petroleum, and um, and we know that petroleum is the basis for a lot of problems. Well, and I, I mean, it, and that's a lot of what we focused on last week is just the you know the type of pollutants that's going into the air, the carbon that's going into the air, and yeah. I mean, the, and the earth, being yeah, the fracking. And, yeah, we're getting and really stability. cold in the winter. We're getting really yeah. hot in the summer. So sure. therefore, we're using more climate energy. change. So the one thing I've done personally where I couldn't utilize solar is I. I buy my energy from a renewable energy company. So like they use the primary source of their energy comes from renewables. So and that's something that was very new and the price is comparable or even less than regular um, And how sources. is that delivered to your house? It's delivered through NSTAR, you know what I mean? Do you still have to pay the delivery charge? You know, that NSTAR is still your 
provider or your delivery source and you pay for that, but you can use alternative sources or alternative power suppliers. So I would and I, I use Arcadia, which Arcadia, not to coin anybody, you know, label anybody, but they use mostly renewable energy for their power source, uh -huh. and it's a tad bit cheaper. So, so I so. I don't. I would need to understand that a little bit better. So when oil gets delivered, it gets put in a little pipe, and it's in your basement. Not not heating. And then, this is electricity. So electricity. Electricity, comes not the, oil. I know, but there's a there's an N star wire, mm -hmm. and it comes off of an electric pole mm -hmm. or the telephone pole. Yep. And then something is producing the electricity yep. to connect to that wire. Yep. So where is the Arcadia? Well, it, ha it goes into the substation. So from what my understanding, and I, trust me, I don't have a full understanding yeah. of this, but they supply the energy. So there's there's energy, like solar energy, there's whole communities that right. have it, and their energy right. goes back into the power supply. I'm not an electrician, and I don't understand how that works. So maybe it's a percentage. They must do it by percentage. Yeah. Because they must have a certain percentage that of electricity that yeah. they put in. To the substation, right. and, and, and I you're think what for happens a percentage is, of that. Right, and okay. that happened in Massachusetts, the ability for us to buy something other than what was in our community, I think six or seven years ago. Yeah. And it wasn't that long ago that we could choose our electricity provider. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So if you guys have had solar installed, yep. please give us a call. If you are using hydroelectric, if you're using yep. water, power somehow right. and actually I know go please call in right. I know going yes. down to um, I was headed somewhere and all of a sudden saw the huge winter wind, wind turbines yep. it was amazing yeah going down to the there's Cape. one in Quincy yeah, yeah there. and there's the yeah there's a bunch by the the it reminded me of something yeah. from Star Wars. Yeah. Because they're these huge They're all things. over Idaho. I mean, yep. they're everywhere. And someone said that, um, I mean, there are some downsides. Someone said that that one of the blades would cause a shadow on their house. It does, yeah. There's you know? been lawsuits, yeah. I think it's, you know, for, you know, in Idaho, you see it all over the mountains. So The wind turbines? Yeah. yeah. And, and Makes and sense on mother, a mountain. They would get so much. Right. They get a lot of generate. wind. Idaho is very windy. Yeah. Um, you know, we do it's, have yeah. it out in the ocean quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't necessarily affect people, but like my mother and lots of people in Idaho hate it because you can't see the mountains anymore. It's you see yeah. the, the wind turbines. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, you know, with any new energy like mm -hmm. that, and I think the older wind turbines were not cost effective. Right. They cost as much. It took like 20 years for it to produce, pay for itself. Yeah. But I think now it's getting better. Right. So, and it was, and, yeah. And I know with solar, um, and if anyone knows this, please call yeah, in. Yeah, please. The number should be on the bottom of the screen or email. Yeah. Um, I know that that there is a certain time frame yes. dur on, after which you get your money back because you right. put in, what, 500, five, I don't even know how much right. it costs. Well, my friend in Ashland, just in Ashland, she has a house on the water, so she yeah. gets a good afternoon sun because they're right on the water. Sure. They don't have the trees. Mm -hmm. Her electric bill is like $20 a month, and then some months she gets money back yeah. as opposed to my electric bill that's like $350 a yep. month. And I had you a friend I mean? who installed and also had a farm right. solar farm yep. so he sold energy yes. back to the company because right. he could generate so much absolutely so i have um, an article here from U us energy information administration eia.gov yeah. um, talking about renewable energy sources that are naturally replenishing but flow limited so inexhaustible in duration but limited per per unit of time right so biomass um, wood and wood waste, municipal solid waste that sure. could be burned and generate energy, sure. landfill gas, which, you know, when you sure. it's get a dump and methane yep. get, gets created in there, and biogas, ethanol from corn or whatever, and then um, biodiesel, then, um, then, of course, the others. But it, it says um, since the mid, until the mid-1800s, it was wood. Right. We burnt wood. Right. Everyone burnt wood, you know, and, and there wasn't, lighting light right. fixtures that was for heat right right that's so. what whale oil was used for yeah exactly. yeah so but it and, I mean, and that's well, not interesting and, and someone that's all about preparedness i was curious about kind of 
what you can do within your home to kind of, I like the idea of being off the grid. Maybe yeah, that's course. the Idaho in me. No, I but, feel that but way. But you know what I mean? You can do the rooftop solar panels, which I thought was interesting, and wind turbines. So it was interesting. We went to- On, a house, on your own house? On your a house. small one? Yeah, a small wind turbine. It wouldn't produce a lot of energy, but it was interesting. When we were in Mexico, mm -hmm. a lot of the places we went weren't on the grid, per se, and they produce energy. Is it energy. the little, little yeah. one with the, fin the, yeah. fin the vents? No. Oh, no, that Yeah, oh. it's a tiny little wind turbine. Okay. Granted, we don't have a lot of wind here unless you're on the sometimes. water. Yeah, sometimes, but trust me, I'm from Idaho, and it's windy all the time. But that that was something that was interesting that came up. And then there was a solar oven, which I thought was interesting. That is a good which, idea. Which you could cook outside. And then hydropower, so of course you'd have to be near a stream. Yeah, Idaho Falls, where... Uh, near where I'm from, they've had hydropower for since I was a little kid. And in Idaho Falls, 99% of the power within that yeah, but city. Yeah, but what could we do around here? Right. I mean, Sounds you, like you might be, be able wind. to do it a river. You might be if you're near mm -hmm. flowing water because any kind well, of flowing Ashland water. Well, Ashland has that. I've yeah. Got a waterfall there. Right. So, but but I'm not even talking. I'm just talking about personally. I mean, say you live yeah. on the Sudbury River, you live near the ocean. And then I thought it was interesting, solar water heating which seems feasible. We do that actually at our cabin, and then solar air conditioning. So mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. And then you can and then, also buy a wall mount where you can store energy, have your own energy pack and not be part of, mm -hmm. like, because solar right now, you they, they install it and the energy goes back into the system. Right. And then you buy and, it, in essence, buy it back. Right. And I but, know there were, weren't there, um, in Puerto Rico, they sent down solar powered, um, units for the individual homes yeah just that's, to, yeah that's to like this tesla support thing. Yeah. their right i think it was tesla yep and then i know you've seen all on the road sides yep there's a solar powered unit yep. about you know yay big looks like laptop size right. that powers whatever that particular thing is or the sign it's running right so there are now applications of it right more widespread than there were well and i also think i mean like i i was very curious about the um the shingles you can Tesla make shingles mm -hmm. that you yeah, can put on that. your house as well. So mm -hmm. I thought I yeah. was kind of focused looking around for that, and I was curious about it. But there's got to be I mean, with any technology, it is getting better. Yes. How mm -hmm. how much energy or how much sun these mm -hmm. these um, panels need. And I mean, why not invest in that? The sun's here all the time. Absolutely. Why do we keep putting carbon in the air? I mean, I, I feel like that's kind of an easy fix. I mean, that's what most people have. Right. And I sun. think, yeah. And I think the situation is becoming more and more extreme because the fossil fuels, the coal, right. the oil, and even natural gas right. are a limited commodity. Right. It's just dead dinosaurs and plants. Right. 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 So they're forming and, something. I mean, just think of it. We've really only been using it for a little over yeah. 200 years. So, yeah. you know, it's those are things that, I mean, and that's just a breath in our time on this earth. So, I mean, I think we need to really consciously think about it. And I wonder if, what if communities open up an area, say like parts of Weston Nurseries that was open, you put a solar field well, then in Well, I think they did that. Yeah, There's already a solar field in Yeah, I'm just saying, but, yeah. but it's for their community. But what if that's something we think about for our own communities? Like if that's something, you know, like we have our own power source and we, we you know, I mean, I think we need to start thinking outside the box a little bit and thinking well, of ways we can produce energy and, and take care of ourselves the yeah. way we want to. And I people think that, didn't need all this energy. <laughs> well, there weren't as many people. Right. So, um, but there also are those huge solar fields next to the highway too. Yeah. So I think it is coming more and it more. Is. There's a solar field on Ho Road. Yeah, Howe Street. Howe. Yeah. Ho. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Um, no, and and I think that's you know I think it needs to be pushed, and I think by us as consumers demanding it. I think yeah. that's that's what's going to make it change. I mean, I know our our federal government at the moment is not very progressive about um, renewable but, energy. But we have the new guy in there, the the uh, science right. advisor. So I think that may help. That's when we start to talk about this, Kelvin. Right. So hopefully that will improve. Yep. So right here, this says 2017 renewable energy provided about 11 quadrillion British thermal units. I didn't know that's what BTU yep. stood for. Yeah. Um, 11 <laughs> quadrillion measured, British yeah. thermal units, BTU. One quadrillion is the number one, followed by 15 zeros. 
Yep. So it's coming. It yeah, is. A little better than it, it was. Is. Yeah, and there's just got to be other ways we can do it. I mean, I think of even pavement. Think of how hot pavement is. Why True. can't we turn Access that into that heat yeah, source? Yeah, I mean, like, why not use that heat source? Well, and, I know. I mean, I Sweden to... burns their trash, and they have it pumped into their cities that heat the you know that thermal energy yeah. i mean like that hits two birds with one stone sure. so there's the technology is out there and think of the jobs it'll produce i mean exactly. it produces more no, jobs it produces technology i yep. think it's in my eyes it's a win-win it's on the win. way it is a win-win yeah. and again just like that other issue it's just yep. a matter of moving the inertia yeah this is the way it's always been this is what we do right but yeah it's not working and we'll run out of it right and it's so damaging it's yeah. damaging yes. the earth yeah, yeah. So on that note, <laughs> we're going to take another break and we'll be back to talk about the dangers of alcohol and we're going to talk about the new uh, beer wine license at the mobile station yep. and just Hopkinton um, beer wine establishments in general. Yep. Be right back. Be right back. Thank you. This week on the Chief's Log, yeah. Chief Ed Lee yeah. introduces us of, uh, to the school great. resource officer. Yes, I'm a little officer uh, that especially in light of all the school shootings and incidents that's been going on throughout the country, people just kind of assume that an SRO is just there to, to, to be security. No. But that's certainly not the case. No, that is a part of the job, security. Yes. And we've done a lot through the past years with Kathy McLeod to make our schools safer. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkeys see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving because if you do it, your child will too. For this one, I think everybody got together and worked This week on uh, exactly All About Hopkins. This star in the center Jim Cousins sits down with Gene um, Birchman and Kathleen Dinsmore talk about pieces. the Marathon Quilters Guild. Um, so people worked on, it was all pieced on a foundation that was on a shape, so you sort of overshoot it and trim it down. Mm -hmm. um, so people worked on that all together and making these exterior blocks as well. Yeah. And then once all those pieces were done, then one person put it all together. And we're back. Welcome back. <laughs> we also wanted to mention that Snappy Dogs uh, has a solar oven, they have solar panels on the roof, and something else solar. And they they do their fridge with solar. Do their fridge with solar. Yeah, so they have a solar That's fridge. the right idea. Yay, Snappy Dogs. Yay. You can find them at the corner of the CVS parking lot. <laughs> well, you're just kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. We all know where that is. So anyway, back to this topic. So we're going to talk about, uh, a couple weeks ago we talked about, we were trying to compare marijuana use and alcohol use, and we ended up we kind talking of about marijuana, marijuana the whole time. So we didn't really uh, look at the alcohol right. um, effects on the brain, but why seeing, we're talking about this? Seeing the mobile station get the beer and wine license, uh, we thought maybe we'll bring the alcohol use back in. Um, mobile station getting beer and wine puts it right next to Hopkinton Highway. Wine and Spirits, right? One Ten Grill, Van Bin. Dynasty, where a lot of people hang out, Vin Bin, and it's right off the highway. Right. So the the people against putting it there. And there were four licenses available, so it was that's why, yeah. Four licenses available still? Three licenses No, still? that one, that would be three after this one. Three after and this one. And I don't think they get it until they do the renovation, until they okay. knock down that, um, that area, or the, they're broadening. The and they're taking out that last little house there, that little gray house on the corner. But, oh, it's the mobile on the right yeah. side. Somehow it was That's Cumberland Farms. Cumberland Farms. Oh, okay. No, oh, it's okay. the mobile on the, the um, yeah, the I get it. I know what it is side. now. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's the one, so it's going to be Dunkin' Donuts. Yep. It's going to be a mobile station with beer and wine. Yep. And picnic tables? What else did they, something else? Yeah, they're going to broaden it. They're, they're going to have more bays for print. gas. Yep. So there's going to be more bays for gas. They're going to take out that little house that's there that's yep. left on that corner. Um, he, they've been trying to sell for a long time. Yeah. So it's actually so, good oh, for them. Oh, that's good. I didn't know it's that. I always them. felt bad because they lost their front lawn when we broadened. I used to tell Celia that. I'm like, oh, they lost their lawn, you know, their front yard. You no, know, they're yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So, but it was interesting as I was reading. I was trying to find something about, okay, well, you know, are there more drunk driving incidents with things that are right off the highway? 
because that was something that Claire had brought up. Claire Wright had brought up, and um, could yeah, she was up. she was one. Of, they were yeah, the they both objected. voted against them getting yeah. their liquor license and the selectmen. Yeah, the select. <laughs> so, but but anyway, so um, you know, I thought that was interesting. But there was a lot of data out there that that right. showed that that was a thing. But I did found a found a bunch of other data. I had no idea that men are almost five times more likely to die of drunk driving than women are, which I was really surprised about. And then I would want to see the percentage of male drivers after 8 p.m. Right. You know, I because I wonder if, or right. if it's people coming home from work. Right. So I would, I would want to know more about that. I would think that. it was late. And, and that was another thing that drove me to look at the times. Yeah. So in Hockington, you can only sell alcohol between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. So that was something interesting. And some communities have up until 11. Um, all of our liquor stores are 9, 9 p.m. They really? close. All, okay. of them, all of them close at 9 okay. p.m. And some restaurants are open until 11. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, I should say retail alcohol, not yeah. um, restaurant alcohol. Right. So restaurant alcohol, obviously, you can serve, I think, t as late as 1 or something yeah. in, in Hopkinton. But actually so, selling it um, from a store. So is it 8 p. liquor establishments or 8 liquor stores? And then we have the restaurants, because we have old time liquor I in Hockington Center. We have Marty's, so so it probably might be eight places that can sell. Right. Well, retail. I was thinking more thinking of the retail. Like yeah, it might that's be. that's where you know, mm -hmm. drinking and driving kind of come into play. And I thought right. it was interesting. There was a higher rate in in Massachusetts that people thought they dr drank too much and then drove. But I also thought so self reporting. Self-reporting. Okay. So national it was 1.9, which I still think is low, and 2.2 in Massachusetts. But I think that may have to do with population and the density of our population. Because, like, you know, you not to condone it, but, I mean, I'm just saying that our, we're very tight in a community. If you're in Idaho, you, you go to a bar, you're going to drive 10 miles to go home. You may not drink as much as if you live a half a mile from oh. the bar. So that was, I wonder if that Maybe. that That's affected. That's an interesting thought. Yeah, the effect of that. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just, it, it, the, the data out there was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. So so I looked up yeah, things. Yeah, what did you find? I, I looked for what health, does what does it do? Yeah. What does alcohol do? Was, yep. So they had a really great, and you have the same thing. Healthline.com has this lovely person yes. with all these arrows pointing to different parts of their body that are and affected. And it affects everything. It does. <laughs> it affects so starting at the top, yep. you can have shrinking of the brain. Nice. Long-term use can shrink the frontal lobes of your brain. Yeah. Blackouts. Yep. Drink too much, go to bed, not remember what happened. Yep. Behavior changes, change mm -hmm. your typical behavior and leave you... Um, with different mental clarity and, and not able to make good decisions. Maybe you're mean, or maybe you're really you get the "I love you, man." You know what I've heard yeah. that someone's <laughs> so, a mean, a mean drunk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. Hallucinations. Yeah. If you if you're an alcohol dependent, you get, I guess, delirium tremens and hallucinations, yep. and a whole bunch of scary things can happen. So that's just your brain. And then dependence. Yes. Yeah. Right. So then, right. Going so the, down to the mouth. <laughs> yeah, the speech. dependence, right. So you <laughs> alcohol dependence varies from person to person, yeah. so it's hard to define. So some people become physically dependent. Right. And some people it's more of a habitual right. walk in the door and pour your scotch. Right. You know, or whatever. Or it's social. I mean, and, I never drink exactly. alone ever. But I mean like I when drink I alone. <laughs> drink <laughs> alone. Yeah. Sorry. That's a song. That never was mind. Awesome. Just ignore it. <laughs> but I had a nap, so I'm really Yeah, okay. feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, slurred speech is one of the first symptoms of excessive alcohol consumption. Mm -hmm. So you know, when the officer comes up to your door, you don't want to shuffle. Sh sh yeah, be careful. Yeah. You speak clearly so they'll know that, I don't know. Heart damage. Well, yeah. Chronic heavy drinking is one of the leading causes of heart cardiovascular. Right. I didn't know that. Yep. I didn't know that. I knew these liver other damage. symptoms. Yeah. And, um, and I knew liver damage, but also mm -hmm. I did not know cancer. Yeah, by the thyroid. Of the yeah. esophagus, and, and, yep. throat, mouth. And breast cancer yeah. can all be Are related. Associated so heavy very drinking. interesting to me that 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 area would be affected by right. heavy drinking. And lung infections actually surprised me. I didn't expect that because it's lowering your immunity. I guess. Right. Yeah. Or maybe you aspirate. So, when so you're give drunk? us a call. Yeah. Ew. Give us a call if uh, <laughs> if you have any strong feelings on this. If you think we should be able to have as many 
liquor stores as we want, or is this encouraging people to drink if we have more availability? Is it tacit approval of right. heavy drinking to have so many drink liquor stores? I don't know. Right. Um, obviously, our community can, can, can it, support yeah. this many liquor stores, which right. is another statement. Right, right. So liver damage, obviously, um, prevent it from properly removing harmful substances because your liver yep. processes toxins yep. and, and alcohol damages that. Um, fatigue, tiredness, could be anemia, mm -hmm. complication of alcoholism. Yep. Um, pancreatitis, yep. excessive alcohol consumption or abuse is a leading cause of chronic pancreatitis. Yep. Can you explain to me what does our pancreas do? It, it works alongside, it's an liver? adrenal gland. Yeah, okay. it's, like a, it's like a liver, but it, it definitely does helps it your body process, it tells your body on how to process those things. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, pancreatitis is awful. You know what I mean? But it also um, helps regulate the blood sugar. Oh, because that's okay. when diabetics, when their pancreas isn't working, that's the blood sugar levels. Get, so we need our pancreas to work. We have really to well. have it's it. It's not an extra thing like an appendix. Nope. Okay. We need and, it. And um, then frequent diarrhea, sorry to say, you know, that if alcohol consumption can mess with your stomach. And yeah. Bleeding gas, painful ulcers, all kinds of things Stomach can lead to infertility. Well, I didn't know that either. Which you, over time, right. longer period of time. And of course, birth, birth defects, defects, sad, sad, sad. Uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, you know, they have the, whatever, the yeah. larger forehead. Yeah. And, I don't yeah. know, it's scary. And tremors and DTs um, yeah. and, yeah. And, and the kids can have some mental development issues. Yeah. Absolutely. Sexual dysfunction. Uh, men who use alcohol have more erectile dysfunction. Um, thinning bones, yeah. risk of osteoporosis, malnutrition, your body doesn't absorb yep. nutrition as well, changes in coordination, um, and your b balance, obviously we know that, that's why they make you walk the line, and I guess. And then muscle cramps because you're dehydrated. Diabetes complications, mm -hmm. numbness, so tingling, numbness, or pain in your hands and feet may be a sign of damage to your central nervous system. Yeah. I didn't know that either. It's crazy. So, you know, so I think if people knew what some of the did. things that could happen, they might think twice about having the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, right. or how many nights in a row. Right. Um, there are studies that talk about the good effects of a glass of wine every day. Right. And it's moderation again. And then yeah. also knowing your limits, because as I was reading this, yeah. of course, everybody has a different tolerance level. And a lot of it's on body weight or how you metabolize or whether you've eaten or not or, right. That's you know, really how healthy you are. Yeah. Um, but there was one thing. It's like, how long does it take the effects of alcohol to wear off? So you go out to a restaurant. How long do you wait before you leave? How much can you consume? Per... Yeah. So it was interesting. It began to... Me so alcohol is an interesting way that metabolizes. And I did not know this. I kind of suspected, but I did not know the actual numbers. But once alcohol has entered your bloodstream, your body begins to metabolize it at the rate of 20 milligrams per hour. That doesn't mean anything. Can you translate? So, so it's, it, it means that your body, go, it goes into your bloodstream and it doesn't go in, it doesn't have to go through your stomach and through everything to metabolize it. It instantly starts to metabolize. So okay. the minute you start drinking, then your body's metabolizing it. All right. And just a brief contrast to marijuana, yep. they were saying gummies don't right. kick in right away. So right. people end up taking Eating too, many, too many and then they're right. in trouble because they know So I think, know you know, someone that's transferring from alcohol to marijuana, they may, you know, BG is like, well, right away. Because I know when I had to have a drink, particularly if I haven't eaten, right away I feel it. Yeah, because yeah. there's nothing. So, so... Is it true that the food absorbs the alcohol? It does. It, okay. Well, it slows or down somehow? the absorption of it. Okay. So it's a little bit different. So it's like your body is metabolizing. So it gets in your stomach juices and it's starting to metabolize it, transferring into energy or sugar or mm -hmm. proteins or whatever. But what happens when you have food in there, the body's busy doing that. Yeah. And it doesn't directly go into the little pockets in your sure. stomach. And maybe so, because your bloodstream has the nutrients and the proteins yeah. and all the other things. Right. So it's almost like a, a it's congested kind of busy. highway. Yeah, yeah. it's, com it's okay. busy. I get it. So, but it was interesting. So there, of course, there's a lot of differences that, you know, how many drinks you have in a so short period of time, which is also known yeah. binge drinking. And you hear about the hazing on the, you know, with the well, kids. and, and death, the, alcohol poisoning. Oh, absolutely. Terrifying. Yeah. And it's important to know how much is in your drink. 
there's a big difference yeah. between TJ's drinks and you know what I mean, some other drinks. Now so, we're not gonna, we're not advertising. No, we're not advertising. But you know, just know what's in your in your drink. You know, right. and particularly if a friend makes it for you, watch. Well, so well, and the other thing is, if you're, I know kids sometimes get into trouble if they're at a party. Yep. And someone says here. Yeah. And they okay. Yeah. And they don't think about and how much they had eaten right. that day. Or don't even they don't think about how many. We can taste it. We can say, oh, geez, this has a lot of alcohol in it. They might not even know. Or, or they're trying to pretend they're fine right. when they just want to cough. Right. You know, so that's the other thing is it's not cool right. to be sick. Right. It's not cool so, to damage yourself for the sake of drinking something someone handed you, but you don't really know what it is. Right. So to metabolize it, it, it kind of breaks it down in the type of liquor. So mm -hmm. a small shot of liquor, which I assume is a shot, which is one ounce. Okay. Um, that takes one hour. A pint of beer, two hours for you to metabolize it. A large glass of wine, three hours. Mm -hmm. And then a few drinks, several hours to metabolize it. Several so, hours. Yeah, several hours. So, and then again, there's factors, body weight, you know, food, you know. Metabolism, certain, I would think, yeah, too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. If, you, if your metabolism is faster. And I think that's what, my metabolism yeah, me too. is really fast. Right. So I drink it and I feel it right away. Yeah. So it, there, it was it was interesting how that came together. But and then about twenty percent of the alcohol from a single drink moves directly into the blood vessels, and then that's that twenty percent. From there, it's carried to your brain. The rest of the eighty percent goes to your small intestine, and then directly to your bloodstream. So it metabolizes much quicker than food or, or other things. So, mm -hmm. and people want to ask how long it's in your bloodstream. So right. If you're Some people think they're it. still drunk in the morning. So urine tests, um, you can you can test alcohol after you've had your last drink. The text. Um, the Are test, you saying wait? Hold on. Uh, how long it stays in your system if you have a test? Say you drive. Say, and this is associated with drunk driving. So when is it found? So obviously they don't do a urine test. But that's um, it you can mean last. the police officer who stops you, right? Oh, I thought you or were saying. Or if it's at work, I thought you were saying someone would go home and test themselves. <laughs> oh, yes, you could. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I was unclear on home the test next... for that. Yeah, it's subject. Why would you do that? Well, it's still my own. Yeah, I gotta eat something. No, so I'm the more advanced testing can test the urine up to 80 hours after you drink. So if you go to work, so a lot of truck drivers. Things like that. Maybe. There's random tests, so yeah. CDL drivers get t can be tested at any time. So it's in your bloodstream, but yeah. is it still affecting your right decision making? Your, your I mean, there's something that ability. says alcohol interfer interferes with messages to your brain. Right. So is it still doing and that? And I think that's question. where they come up with that 0.8 percent yeah. blood alcohol level because the average person, on average, are we getting yep. time? Yeah. Yeah, is is blood alcohol. So there's a lot to talk so about. So in general, so um, be very careful with it. Yeah, don't drink and drive. And know don't your drink too limitations. Much. Yep. And have a great week. And eat <laughs> we'll before you drink. We'll see you next drink. week. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us.